Welcome to my lecture about moving configuration changes from a desk to a production site. Hi, my name is Johannes Nott. I'm a CPIC certified expert on networking and I am a CPIC CTA, CPIC technology advocate, and I'm a CPIC certified trainer, CCI. I'm not a coder to be honest, so I'm a kind of alien here at this conference. But I found a way to move configuration from one Netscaler to the other, from one Citrix ADC, as we say nowadays, to the other. This had always been missing. People had been asking how to do it. And so I decided to do this lecture. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. I'm Austrian. Hey, wrong, wrong, wrong. No kangaroos. This is Austria, not Australia. We have Steinbergs. This is in the middle of the Alps in Europe. Uh, it's a nice little country, about 9 million inhabitants. I'm living in Baden near Vienna. So this is round about here. And if we go even closer, a bit up, here we go. We can find my house and my office window. Here I am. Recently I had to do a web application firewall project. The web application firewall is a highly complex thing. There's always a risk of false positives. So you have to test applications quite well. On the other hand, applications change quite frequently. So there are updates, there are patches to keep the number of false positives on a reasonable number, we have to test all the changes carefully prior to the final rollout. Unfortunately, there is nothing like a built-in method to replicate changes from test site to production site or from one site to the other. So I had to invent this method. Like always, I wanted to get a simple approach. From my customer side, there had been several requirements. I had not been permitted to involve additional machines. Nothing like a dedicated Windows or Linux server running the strips. For good reason, the customer didn't permit installing additional software on the ADCs. I wouldn't have done either. And so we had to go with the tools that actually had been available on the ADC. My solution had to be done from a Citrix ADC only, and all the scripting languages had to be there. After some thinking, my decision was to use Perl to extract changes, the bash to do all the copy jobs, and the Netscaler to apply changes to the remote site. Probably I have to talk a little bit about my customer's environment. A customer got the test environment, completely separated test environment, including test servers and the single test ADC. There's a production site with production servers and production ADCs. This is a high availability pair. And in addition, there's a disaster recovery site. This is more or less similar to the production site. All changes have to be done in testing site, of course. These changes must be tested and approved by those responsible for the applications. After approval, the new profiles get copied into the production environment manually. Sometimes it's necessary to make changes in the production environment that have not been previously tested. In order for the test and production environment to remain the same, such changes must be copied back from production environment to the test environment. Unfortunately, not all of these changes get also done in the DR site. So there's a job running every night, 3 a.m., replicating changes from the production site to the DR site. I think enough of talking. Let's have a look at the bash scripts. Why did I choose using the bash? Well, it's already there, it's default shell in BSD. 
so no need to install anything. I mainly use the bash for some housekeeping and to execute all the rest of the scripts. It's executed manually in the test environment and automatically in production environments. So these are the modules in my bash script. There's a function to actual copy and import. There's a call for the Perl scripts extracting the configuration. I will see if there had been any changes. I will not do any copy if there had not been any changes. If there are, I will copy. I will log to the NS log to external log servers. And in the end, I will do some housekeeping. So this is the function that actually does the copy job and applies the changes. Both connections log on as NS root and they use private key public key infrastructure to do the logon. If you don't know how to do the logon using private key public key infrastructure, there's a blog on my homepage blog.nodes.at and there are white papers from Citrix. This is just a call from a Perl script. The Perl script extracts the changes and stores it into a file in var temp called export.txt. That will go into the Perl script later. In var temp, there is an old version of the export.txt and I will call bash diff to find out if there is any difference to the new one. If there are changes, then I will call the copy function. The parameter here is the IP address of the remote ADC. Everything needs to get locked, so I will use echo to lock, and I will just pipe the output of echo into var lock into a lock file, and I will pipe the output of the second echo into a BSD function called logger. Minus H is the host, IP address minus P is the port of the syslog server to log to. So in the end, I have to do some housekeeping. I will delete the eldest version of the log and do a log rotation and move the current export.txt into export.zero so it will not get overwritten the next time somebody runs the script. So the next part will be Perl. Perl comes with a Citrix ADC. That's why I choose to use it. My Perl script extracts lines containing certain keywords and it's executed from the bash. In my case, the keywords are the names of the profiles. It could be any other object in the nsconf file. I would really be curious what you will be using it for. I would be happy if you would let me know. The admin has to set up an array of strings. The script will then open the netscaler config file, create a new var temp export file, search the nsconfig file for all these strings, and all lines containing these strings will get copied to the export.txt file. So this is the array of strings. It's called search for and can contain a near to unlimited number of strings you are searching for and you take care for. In my case, these are three application firewall profiles, one for CRM system, one for the mail system and one for SAP. So next, I have to open the ns.conf file. The ns.conf file contains all the configuration of a Citrix ADC. And of course, I will have to create the export.txt file. The export.txt file will contain all the extracted configuration. The ns.conf file is read line by line. This while loop will loop through all the file. I have a for loop 
to loop through my array of search for strings. If a line contains any of my search for strings, I would copy this line into my output file and leave my loop. Leaving the loop is important because a line could contain more than one of my keywords. This would end in duplicated entries in the output file. Duplicated entries would result in errors during the import. The output file I created before is a perfect Netscaler script file as we usually use in Citrix ADCs. The Citrix ADC got its own scripting language. It's a built-in language, it's proprietary, it's a Citrix-owned one. During boot, a Citrix ADC will start with no configuration at all and will then execute the ns.conf file and configure itself. So a Citrix ADC doesn't have configuration files like Unix hosts have, but just a script file, the ns.conf file. Because we extracted our configuration file from the ns.conf, it's a perfect Citrix ADC batch file. This import script gets executed by the initial batch script, but it will run on the target system, not on the source system. Remember we created the SSH connection and execute it within the remote session. Altering objects on a Citrix ADC may be tricky. That's why I just delete existing objects and recreate ones. Being tricky is especially true for the WAF relaxation rules because these are regular expressions and we face some problems altering regular expressions. To be able to delete policy expressions, we need to assign other expressions to the policy. I will use the built-in default expressions instead. So this procedure has to be adapted for every use case individually. For every one of my three policies, so CRM, mail and SAP, I have to set the policy action to something else. I use application firewall bypass. This would lead into a non-protected website for a short period of time. Instead, you could also use the application firewall drop. If your connection is dropped, the browser will try to reload the page. So in the end, the user will see a little bit slow loading page, but that's it. No concerns about the security. As soon as the regional action is unbound, we can delete it. That's the next command. Citrix ADC scripting language, Netscaler patch, got a command called patch, and uh, this is used to execute scripts that are stored in a file. The shell command is a call to the bash, to the local bash on the remote side, to delete the import file we just executed. The last two commands are saving the configuration and leaving the scripts, so leaving the remote Citrix ADC. So that's all about the scripts. Maybe I should show you how to set up a cron job on a Citrix ADC. Every Unix system and similar systems like Linux got a time-based scheduler called Chrome. It's similar to the Windows Task Scheduler. Usually setting up cron jobs is easy, but that's not true for the Citrix ADC. Cron jobs are governed by a file called crontab. It's located in etc subdirectory. Unfortunately, etc subdirectory in Citrix ADC is in RAM only, so a reboot would destroy the cron tab. Because of this restriction, it takes a trick to permanently alter the cron tab. If you take a look at CTX 122-271, you will find there are three scripts executed during boot, the nsb4.sh, the nsafter.sh and the rc.netscaler. I would suggest using the rc.netscaler file. Just enter the line like the highlighted one and echo 
followed by minute, hour, day, month, day of the week, and then the command. The command in our case is the run export sh bash script, and we will append the output to the etc cron tab. Probably it's enough of theory, maybe it's time for a short demonstration. My team and me created a simplified copy of my customer's environment. It consists of two Citrix ADCs, there is nothing like HA, and there is just one WAF policy to be altered. There are two Citrix ADCs. The left one should be my test environment, and it got a WAF profile called AppFV Prof RGB. Looking at the security check start URL, you see learning is turned on, blocking is turned off. Let's call the right one the production environment. The security checks, of course, are quite the same as in the test environment. So same profile and same setting, learning turned on, blocking turned off. I'll close the profile and switch over to the test environment again, just to turn off learning and turn on blocking. Click OK and save the configuration. Next, I will switch over to a terminal and start my script. I have to execute the shell command to go to the bash and move to the nsconfig subdirectory. From here, I will execute my run export shell script. Extracting the configuration is extremely fast, so the first thing we see is a secure copy, and next the SSH connection to execute the remote script. So the script terminated successfully. I made it a bit slower to be able to comment on it, Let's switch back to my so-called production ADC, open the RGB profile and see the settings of the security checks. So you see learning is turned off, blocking is turned on. The script successfully copied all the changes from the test environment to the production system. The main use case in a WEF environment, of course, is not security checks, but relaxation rules. Relaxations basically are a description of the application, so they are the relaxation to the strict limitation the web application firewall does to the application. So I navigate down to learned rules and edit the learned rules. There are some of them, so I will just select all of them and deploy. Close the dialog, go back, save the running configuration, and finished. Let's jump to the production system. Navigate to relaxation rules and see how many rules we have. There are one, two, three, four, five, six rules. Okay. Next, we will go back to command line, fire our script, and we'll see if we can successfully replicate the relaxation rules. The script finished. The movie ran in real speed this time. Now go to the production system and see what's in the relaxation rules. There are way more than we had before, so the replication took place. All my scripts, including PowerPoint slides, are for download. Visit tinyurl.com slash ctx minus adc minus movie. You will have to enter your name and your email address, but don't worry, I won't spam you. I got two blocks, block.notes.at, my regular block, and there's a lab environment, including a lab guide in wonderkitchen.tk. Thanks for listening to my short lecture. I hope you enjoyed it and hope to hear from you soon.
拜拜。